a Casa Brave 8. They call it the best, cheaper GoPro Hero 10 alternative, hosting a larger, half-inch image sensor and flagship grade improvements. The real question is, is it really that good? Let's inspect. Hey, welcome to the channel, nice to meet you. My name is Michael and what we do here is to inspect fresh and cool tech, so if you like this idea, please do subscribe to the channel. What we want to learn today is everything about this body, that's the latest coming from Akaso, a model called Brave 8. Now that's at the moment the most advanced action camera that they have released and according to a website is uh, meant to compete with the latest GoPro editions. So in this video I really would like to cover everything that possibly some of the earlier reviews have missed, like the super smooth stabilization and a lot more samples, you know, including bright days, low light, uh, action scenarios, riding a bike, random photography and videography, so that you get a good idea whether that's uh, a really decent purchase to think about. And of course we're going to see how it compares to the market leaders anyhow. Starting with the price, 279 US dollars. That's how much the Acaso Brave 8 costs at the launch. It's only $20 less than the DJI Osmo Action and about $120 shy of the latest GoPro Hero 10. And um, yeah, obviously cheaper than Insta 361R. It's more expensive than the SJ Cam SJ10 Pro, which comes as a surprise to me. And actually, for the price of the Brave 8, you can buy almost three of these. That's one of the old. Still very good Acaso entry-level action cameras. So while it clearly is, in terms of hardware, the most advanced device that they have released up to date, through this video I really want to show you whether that's a meaningful purchase and only one way to find out. Let's keep on inspecting. Unboxing brings the usual feeling surrounding a Acaso devices. They still look very similar to the way GoPro used to present their cameras until two generations ago. So, a nice box with cool design and some of the highlights for the camera. You have to first unmount it in order to take it out. Very nice build quality as a starter. You can well notice the almost rugged looking design, somewhat similar to DJI Osmo Action's coating and similar ideas about mounting the doors. There also is a compartment with quite many accessories. These are mounts to help you to attach the camera to almost any kind of surface or thread. However, no chest or head straps and no really good tripod, so that's a bit disappointing, but kind of usual for cameras with that many accessories. By the way, something really nice, when you order the camera, a castle give you gifts. Gloves, which are great for the winter, and also, weirdly, a pair of socks and beach towel set. This is so surprising that I can't even make a proper comment about. From the accessories, guess the most useful one is the remote. Not a waterproof one, but nice to have. For comparison, GoPro's waterproof remote costs extra 100 bucks. Focusing again on the Castle Brave 8 itself, nice curves, beautiful design, pretty good job that Acaso have done so far. For passionate action camera users like me, it's clear that they've stepped up their game and that developing such a good chassis costs a lot of money. From what I see on the outside, so far the budget is almost well justified. Almost, because there is no on-body quarter-inch thread and uh, you always have to carry it in this frame, which is nice protection obviously, and you can uh, add a quarter-inch mount here at the bottom, but I would have preferred to see an on-body quarter-inch mount. Also, this, this frame is not perfect. Uh, it obviously has cuts, you know, on, on the sides, uh, the uh, top area covering the um, shutter and the power button, and also here, where we would supposedly open this door and have access to the micro SD card in the USB port, but it doesn't really work. The only way to do it, I need to remove the cage. That's not a user-friendly option. Take the camera out. I'm not sure how it feels in your unit, but with mine, uh, it kind of falls apart when I take it off. <laughs> That's not supposed to be the case. A casual explanation is that because I have one of the very early units pre-production, um, it, it, it's not still in the best shape, but because I like to double check things, please comment below if you already have the Brave 8, do you have the same quality of the cage? Let me know. 
Acaso are stressing this time on the stellar tech specs. The fabulous IMX586 half-inch image sensor by Sony, same one that is inside the DJI Mavic Air 2. A powerful Amborella chipset, 9-piece super-wide lens setup with 60mm equivalent, 1550mAh battery, waterproof housing, 1.7 inches touchscreen, a front reference colorful display is present too, there's voice control, Wi-Fi inbuilt and weight of close to 114 grams. Based on the tech specs sheet, a Castle Brave 8 should not only be good, it has the hardware that enables it to better perform than DJI Osmo Action and be almost up to par with GoPro Hero 8 and even GoPro Hero 9. Before the footage analysis, a few words about the interface and the shooting modes. I wasn't expecting too much from the menus and the interface, probably this helped me to not be too disappointed in what has been integrated. Swiping gestures to access the different modes, swipe down and this is the settings area, quick access to Wi-Fi, the display brightness, lock screen preferences. Swipe left opens the playback menu, very GoPro styled but not GoPro like performing. Controlling the playback is not that smooth yet. Swipe right and you can choose the shooting modes, video, time lapse, photo and so on. Press on the mode indicator itself and you can control a lot. Different resolutions, however not as many as with the latest Hero series. And here's the toggle about the stabilization options. No stabilization or super smooth or regular. If you swipe up, things get even more interesting and this menu clearly is inspired by the Pro Tune settings included with GoPro. But not that powerful. You will notice the recording resolution possibilities. There's 60, 50, 30 and 25 FPS in 4K. 25 and 50 are only available if you set the camera in PAL mode. At least the progress compared to most other Acaso devices. No 24 frames per second included in the November firmware patch though. The lower resolutions also have nice options. 1080p for instance goes up to 200 FPS. If I may show you some more samples now, best use cases when the weather is nice and shiny, the more light, the better the footage, you're going to notice the excellent performance of the camera and the pretty awesome colors it can reproduce. I believe the sensor plays its role pretty well, at least so far. But if we take a closer look and analyze this time-lapse, and this tree in particular, you're going to notice how the image gets much softer towards the edges of the frame. Sharpness is great at the center, but outside the ideal line looks almost out of focus, which should not be the case. Most action cameras may show such symptoms, but this is much more intensive than the usual. And while I can easily forgive it on a $100 device, here I once again can remind you about the price of close to $280. 4K at 60fps recordings are available too. I'm with somewhat mixed feelings about them. The mode doesn't support the regular stabilization, which is a disadvantage. The deal with the stabilization modes is the following. The standard one, which is according to Acaso not that great, is in-camera. In my testing I was really happy with it because it puts the lens in linear mode and there almost are no distortions notable. The super smooth is based on the gyro and is applied in post-production. Right now the only way to take advantage of the super smooth stabilization is to enable it in the camera and process the footage through the Acaso Go app on an Android smartphone. Because currently the function is not enabled on the iOS edition of the app, like also working on it, I'm not really sure when it's going to be released. That's kind of a disadvantage. Also, the Android app edition is also somewhat limiting because you can parse the footage, but you can't fine-tune it. For instance, you can't switch between narrow, linear, ultra-wide and so on. Hopefully this feature is going to appear at some point. And also Akasu promised to release a desktop version of the software so that you can do that on your computer just like what we have with the Insta361R. From what I can tell about the Super Smooth, it looks good and better than most other cameras, but I don't think it's better than DJI Osmo Action, Insta361R or GoPro Hero 7, 8, 9 or 10. Also, consistency is there only if the day is bright. I noticed that in an early autumn morning, with a lot of contrast, the camera fails to deliver good dynamic range. There are a lot of areas that simply appear too dark. I've compared the image quality to the ultra-wide sensor of the Mi 11 Ultra, which happens to use the exactly same image sensor, well, paired with OIS, and the result is well in favor of the smartphone, showing in my opinion drastically better footage. I made some tests in comparison to GoPro as well. Hero 10 has overall the ability to capture more details and doesn't suffer from the lens softening described earlier. Stabilization also feels better.
Nighttime footage is the part that intrigued me the most, because having one of the largest sensors ever deployed in an action camera, a Castle Brave 8 was my hope for a new low-light king, but it tends to face similar challenges to everything we've seen so far. It's good, but not quite there yet. I think the positive fact is that it captures a fair amount of details. Hopefully, with some firmer tuning, it will deliver a lot better results. So motion has been, on the other hand, really pleasing. I thought there might be some skipped frames or other issues, but not at all. Maybe this is among the few features I can only praise. A job well done. Of course, it is not in the same league as GoPro Hero 10, but 1080p in 240fps sounds pretty tempting. If you wonder about the smartphone app, it's called Akaso Go, tries to look like Insta360's app, but it's simpler. Very chaotic firmware update procedure, quite many things that Akaso need to fix on a firmware level, because it never really shows you proper status when connected to the phone. Microphone test! Of course, we need to do this because with Brave 7, the previous model, the microphone quality was pretty bad. And I gotta tell you, these are pretty great conditions for a microphone. Um, it's sunny, almost zero wind, and uh, well, if you hear some noise, that's because of the bike. And yeah, of course, I'm going to try it out with attaching to this mount in, in just a few moments. You've probably seen it, how it performs during the video already. Um, I guess because of the side USB Type-C port, there would be the possibility to add an external microphone. But again, I'm rooting for an entirely external solution because that's going to bring you a lot better quality. So the point now to let me know in the comments below, how does that microphone work? Let me show you a list with the major flaws I've noted down. The lens softening issue, the dynamic range remarks, the missing 24 frames per second recording mode, lack of shutter speed control, lack of flat color mode, no on-body quarter-inch mount, and the not too good and stable firmware, and the missing super smooth function for iOS users. So, Akaso have chosen to climb a really high mountain, where I guess at the top we have the GoPro Hero 10 and uh, DJI uh, Osmo Action 1 and 2, not to forget Insta360 1R, which is crazy innovative. And now we have this, uh, the Akaso Brave 8. Don't get me wrong, it has amazingly good hardware, exceptional build quality, a lot of potential, but just comes to show that Akaso still have a long way to go in terms of firmware, and software development and honestly I, I think if they had more focus on the user experience even if they have released something simpler than that if it was working perfectly smooth that was about to bring probably better value so i guess buying now the uh acaso brave 8 in order to do it you really have to be very financially brave or you can prove me otherwise and uh, let us talk about all that do you like this action camera comment below and let me know. No matter when you watch this video, I would suggest checking around in the comments or probably some of the forums online how far Acaso have reached in terms of firmware development and figure out whether that's a really good and meaningful purchase to you. Thank you for staying with me until the end of this video and a big thanks to Acaso for letting me try this camera right after its release. Uh, been so much fun and I hope it's been likewise. Uh, don't forget to support the channel in any form or way you can. Uh, at least you can subscribe if you enjoy the content so far. Wish you a very shiny day. I'm Michael. Gonna be back soon with more cool tech inspections. Have a great day.